Throughout my time in educational psychology, I have learned a lot about how to not only teach students, but to teach them effectively. However, students are more than just brains to teach. They are people who experience emotions and have lives outside of the classroom. With that being said, I will talk about numerous psychological developmental theories and how knowing what stage your students are at can benefit you and the classroom. In order for me to teach my students effectively and efficiently, efficiently, I must know how Eric Erickson's psychological development affects them and what stages they may be at when they are with me. Firstly, what does Erickson's psychological development talk about? This theory is all about the basic conflicts that students go through during their lifetime. When my students enter my class, they will more than likely be in the identity versus confusion stage. During this stage, students begin to explore who they are as a person and who they want to be. In order for my students to feel like they can explore their options, they need to feel safe and secure. I can help them feel this way by providing a safe and welcoming classroom environment where they can be free to explore their options and what goals they wish to achieve. While my students are going through this identity versus confusion stage, they may begin to enter and make decisions about their life, and that's when Kohlberg's moral reasoning comes into play. Students during this stage of their life begin to take opinions, values, and beliefs of others into, the into consideration about what to do. These students use all the knowledge and outside effects to make decisions on what they should do with their lives. To make this time in my students' life easier, it is important for me to not only force none of my own beliefs onto them or let others do the same. It is crucial that in my role as the teacher, I am there to simply answer any questions that they may have and more importantly, be someone that they can listen to with their struggles. The small role I play in the student's life can be seen in Bronfen Brenner's ecological theory. The main point in this theory is that the different relationships that the student has has different effects on them throughout their life. One of the closest relationships that a student may have is one with a teacher whom they have had for multiple years, and a music class is often where that teacher is. Since I, as a music teacher, can have such an important impact on my student's life, it is cru crucial that I am someone that they can look up to. However, it is imperative that I not let my students become who I am. My students should become the best version of themselves and be the person that they can be. The best way for me to do that is to simply let them explore and cre be creative and not restrict them to certain boundaries. Similar to Broffenbrenner's ecological theory is Vygotsky's theory of social cultural development. Both of these theories involve the use of the outside influences, but Vygotsky's is more involved with the cognitive development rather than the psychological development. Through the use of more knowledge about other, other zones and zones of proximal development, students will be able to flourish not only as students, but as people. I feel that is important to not only help my students psychologically, but also cognitively. I believe that my students should also help each other, and so I could implement this by using the more knowledgeable other. I could have my students get into groups and work on sectional work, and while doing that, they enter their zone of proximal development. In doing this, the students not only build relationships, but also develop their musical skills, which is what my ultimate goal is. While students go through all these numerous stages in life, they begin to enter into James Marcia's four identity statuses. These statuses include diffusion, foreclosure, moratorium, and achievement. Throughout these different stages, students begin to explore their options as well as what they want to do. I believe that is a crucial point in my student's life, and decisions are made here and can have an often long-lasting effect on what they end up doing. My ultimate goal as an educator is to help my students get through these four stages that James Marcia has established. I can help them by asking questions about what they enjoy doing and what activities make them happy. After all, I do not want my students going into professions that don't make them happy. Now, how can I take all the knowledge we have discussed so far and keep it under control? Well, I need to establish classroom management. A great way to do this is through operant conditioning. This process includes using rewards and punishment to get a desired behavior from students. A great example of this includes the experiment which was conducted on a rat in which the rat would press a button to get a treat. As a result, this conditioned behavior led to a more treats and a more desired behavior. Now, this can be done in my classroom if, the, if I allow my students the opportunity to choose music for their next concert, as long as they do well in their previous concert. As a result, the students will want to do better on their concerts and will be more than likely to work harder for it as long as they get to choose the music they want for their next concert. A great tool for classroom management is classical conditioning. This simple conditioning method can be applied to any classroom. How this works is the unconditioned stimulus is applied to an unconditioned response. During the reaction between the unconditioned stimulus and response, a stimulus is applied. Over time, the unconditioned stimulus and response are done simultaneously and that begins to the make the condition response. For example, if I want my students to be quiet in the classroom when I start class, I can simply start playing the piano. 
Over time, when I start playing the piano, students will begin to shush each other and themselves in order to continue on with class. This can be seen in other ways, such as when the bell rings to dismiss students from class. Over time, they begin to learn that the bell schedule is something they can use to leave. As I begin to become an educator, I must remember that students not only learn cognitively, but socially. Oftentimes, students watch how others act around them and will begin to imitate that behavior. If I can use this in my, to my advantage as an educator, I and use positive reinforcement on other students who are representing good behavior and encourage others to do the same. How will I be able to apply this to my classroom? Well, if I can get all of my students to work hard together and achieve the same goal, I can achieve just about anything. However, in order to keep them there, I must always encourage my students to do their best and keep them engaged throughout the class period. If I fail to do this, students will lose faith in me and begin to goof around. Now, what makes a good teacher? I believe that a good teacher are those who care not most about their students and their who care most about their students in subject area. If I, as the educator, do not care to give my students the time of day or the subject area any time of day, how can I expect my students to give me their all? I can't, and that is why I believe it is so important for me as an educator to give it my all to my students and my uh, subject area. Finally, a good teacher not only cares about their students and the subject area, but also utilizes all the tools that they have learned. I know as I prepare for my eventual student teaching, I will be sure to use a ton of the skills I have learned throughout this class. These skills range from using different and numerous conditioning techniques and to different psychological developments. I hope that this is the I hope that through this class or video you have learned about as much as I have from this class. This class has taught me so much about teaching and creating engaging lessons. I cannot wait to see what my future holds for me. Thank you.